Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase Progress Report. We're on week 10 of 2021 and if you are new here I bring you the latest news and updates of everything Starbase every Monday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out. It also really helps out the channel. So let's get to it. A quick reminder if you do want this news delivered straight to you via Discord, you can join mine where you'll get a notification or you can follow my Starbase content announcement channel and have it delivered straight to your own or faction Discord, thus helping to keep your faction up to date with the latest happenings at Starbase. Just hit the follow button at the top of the channel. Sharing my videos helps support the channel and I greatly appreciate it, so thank you. Closed Alpha saw mainly bug fixes in last week's patch as well as a nerf to plasma thrower power costs and a very interesting graphical feature in the form of volumetric lights. This is an effect that happens in real life, mostly when concentrated light illuminates the particles in the air. You can see this with light shining through breaks in a cloud, or even from streetlights on a foggy night. In Starbase this can happen in the vacuum of space, and a switch in the settings, and looks very cool. It has two options and I'll demonstrate them here, starting with looking at the default, and then our first option is just turning on the volumetrics. This can look weird due to all lights in Starbase technically being single point lights despite their shape. Knowing this the devs added an option to simulate the area of the light, and this is where things look the best. This feature while not cheap in GPU resources adds a lot of atmosphere to anywhere it's used. I'm going over a few examples here of before and after, you can see for yourself how this subtle change can really improve the visuals. There is only 16 days left in Q1 and we've got another great week for Larry quotes, and I'm going to start with the big one. It's now looking like a delay is inevitable, much to the relief of pretty much everyone with the game right now. Larry stated they have now secured more options and will shortly decide what's best for the game, as well as clarifying that yes everyone agrees delaying EA would be the best option. This says to me that the funding for the game may have started to look a little on the concerning side, with no income to offset the many devs working on Starbase now for more than a year longer than originally estimated is certainly understandable. However with no investors behind Frozenbyte being one of the studio's key positives, I hope they consider turning to us in the community to help keep them going. I know many people would happily pre-order their copy now, as well as many other people without access that would consider a pre-order if it came closed out for access. Until they try though, we would not know if this would be enough for the time they need. So where does that leave us? Well at the time of recording Frozenbyte has still not officially put a delay announcement out, but they are working on a roadmap for us with a lot of pre and post early access features. This again hints at an extended CA period. Larry concludes they just need to figure out some of the bigger picture stuff which they now have pretty much solved. They have decided to do all the factory stuff super properly so that added some extra dev time. But it's mostly figured out and you'll be seeing some nice progress, you guessed it, soon. A roadmap is definitely going to be nice to have for time estimates, and something I thought we were only going to get once we shifted to early access. A quick reminder here that roadmaps are just that, estimates, not deadlines. My guess is that we'll get this roadmap with the announcement, and will contain the new early access estimate. And to preempt the questions in the comments, my estimate for early access is another quarter at the minimum, that's three months. The game needs to polish a few main areas, tutorials for new players on a lot more of the basics, bugs and net sync issues, and content. In conversations with the active community members and Larry himself, one of the key things I think we need is working stations, to the point that we can live out of them independently from anything else. So this would be fuel and propellant manufacturing, and secondly ship design and manufacturing. Just this would give everything something big to work towards, and it will take time to get these things running too, further buying the devs more time to finish further features. The current gameplay of mining, making ships, and mining some more is just not enough of a gameplay loop to sell the game on. We recently had another station assault event to further test this part of the gameplay, and oh boy was it a bug filled event. If you want to catch up on this you can watch the replay of my birthday stream that I did last week here on YouTube, where the bugs started to get very tiring indeed. So how does Frozen Bite tackle the bugs? Larry gives us a bit of insight here too. All the devs have their own specialisation, with a lot of overlap of course, but if a bug warrants an instant fix then it gets done before anything else. Generally speaking, their programmers spend a lot of time fixing bugs to keep the technical debt away. Now this alone says a lot on why some feature progress has been slow. Testers have been rooting out bugs left, right and centre, and it's obviously keeping the devs on their toes. 
Some of the bugs are lower priority and oh boy do we have a lot of those. Lara continues we still fix a lot every week and there's no technical debt in the core tech. Just single low to medium bugs. Now for those of you that have not heard this term before, technical debt is a software development term that reflects the implied cost of additional rework caused by choosing to fix certain things later, making it harder to implement changes the longer you wait. So what Larry is saying here is that the core tech is solid and easy to maintain. Continuing with the quote, they fix everything immediately that pops out the error reporter that they can. Going back to the station assault example, Lara explains that the tech is still under work. So unfortunately them not working is a result that the tech is not there yet. So he's hoping they can get this wrapped up soon. On to more positive quotes now, with some new bits that will be coming our way soon. We have news that pixel screens are planned, but not only that, shape based screens are also planned. I can see the community making excellent use of these when we get our hands on them. Easy mode factories will be 100% YOLO free, but the creative depth cycles and loops are left for those desiring more. This is great news for those allergic to writing code. A material scanner is coming too, which Larry says scans a component or asteroid with a ray. Material information is stored in the device and can be read via YOLO from device fields. And as an added bonus, it's already done and is currently in QA testing. Other sensors are designed for factories. When asked about an ore detector for finding specific ores, he answers with we don't have any detector plans yet, but we'll return to that at some point. The sensors are not planned to solve that specific problem. And to be honest, I think that's a pretty good answer. If we had a detector, there would be no searching involved and no joy at the reward of finding that rare ore. Lastly, Lowry moves on to one of the big ones, the new inventory system. This new system allows for custom inventory windows, free floating, resizable moving windows. You'll be able to open up multiple inventories to transfer things or keep them minimized while playing. When this new system hits, it will also bring with it the new crates we have seen before. He goes on to give an example that would allow the 3D printer to have an inventory style queue. And so it opens also crafting and manufacturing options. Instead of a chip with 200 IDs, you can actually see what items are coming and in what order and in interact with that. This sounds exactly like what we need given how the printers currently work. The new bigger crates will also have a slightly better efficiency than what you would get from the same amount of smaller crates. Larry teases there's a few key surprises which tie everything together, so it seems progress is more stagnant since they have to hold back some of the near completed features. It's looking like this will be a massive update when it drops and will go a long way to solving many of the current issues in Starbase. Larry wants to remind us though that once they deliver bigger stuff, it still leaves about 9,999 features players have wished for for a later date. And some of us will be getting the stuff we hope for and some will have to keep waiting just a little bit longer. Now onto the progress report. The main design features worked on last week were Weapons no longer leave empty magazines in inventory when the magazine is spent. Players are no longer able to punch while in cursor mode. Details on material refining process has been worked on. Salvage collector part of the refining process design has been started. This is a brand new device for us to keep an eye out for in future updates. Material point scanner has been tested on asteroids, devices and other objects after committed fixes. Work on large generator continues. Current assets have been tested. Another brand new device here that we knew was coming and one part of this is in the image you see for this section. A missile design and launch testing. Removing speed inherit fixed some issues with missiles colliding with ships. Since the inclusion of missiles though, they have been too buggy to play with and use in testing. So here's hoping the fix works. Now onto the gameplay updates. Quality of life fixes to facing to up orientation bind have been made. Initial resource network support for material gases, which are not yet available in game. Server support for resource generating devices has been worked on. And various issues with tripod weapon magazine handling have been fixed. UI updates this week are mission invitation and accepting logic have been updated. Players accept mission and accepted players are invited by officer. And mail server support for receiving attachments has been finished. The designer's update includes initialization order related to issues that occurred when opening certain maps in the spaceship designer has been fixed and issues that caused entering station designer to get stuck with larger stations have also been fixed. Just one animation update this week with work on improving mid-air animations continues. On to station art updates now we have level art for planet city barricade modules has been made. 
Oki and Rando ship shop identification holograms have been updated, and work on Skyscraper Roof 04 interior has started. And lastly, other updates this week are floating resource bridges in one of Ruber's refill stations have been placed in their correct location. Several updates have been made to player ship shops, and new ships have been added, and some ship placements have been changed. The Kodiak and Surf spaceships have been updated, work on Exorium processing unit model is nearly complete, and visual and performance updates to warp gate entry VFX. There's no feature video this week, but if you do get into closed alpha, or already are, be sure to send any funny or awesome clips and recordings my way for a chance to be featured on the channel. Feel free to contact me via Discord or come jump on my Discord server, which is also home to my faction, the Kbots, should you be looking for one to join. As always, please smash that like button, share this video with your friends and faction, leave a comment with any questions you want answers to, and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.